homosexuality and lesbianism was considered mental illnesses even in this country up until 1973. The American Psychiatric Association was called to a meeting with Planned Parenthood International and the Rockefeller World Population Council. Now what do the abortion people and the Rockefellers got to do with homosexuality? They decided that we should deregulate homosexuality as an illness and treat it like a regular behavior and then push it in the black community because we got the AIDS ready. The AIDS is ready. So we're going to make the black men gay, give them the AIDS in their anus, and they're going to shoot it into their women's vagina, and within 40 years, AIDS would be the number one killer of black women on the face of the earth, 38 to 50. Black men, homosexual, one of the highest HIV rates in the country. The anus is a direct route to the bloodstream. That's why when you take the baby to the doctor, the doctors tend to give some of them the immunizations in the rectum because it goes straight to the bloodstream. So if you got a man sodomizing another man, that energy goes straight to the bloodstream. You talk about death. On contact! On contact, on contact, on contact. And that's why we against homosexuality. No more questions. These ones. And we're back to this up. <laughs> okay, are uh, homosexuals just born that way? And um, what does the body, is it a sin? And what does the Bible say about it? Are homosexuals just born that way? And what does the Bible say about it? Are homosexuals just born that way? And what does the Bible say? First, Cleve, let me ask you, who prompts you? <laughs> Give you those good questions. There are questions about human sexuality that I don't think we can answer. We're either going to Stand for what God says, or we're going to leave it alone. Chapter 2, where to me an authentic relationship uh, from a biblical perspective is a uh, man and a woman. It's a very good question, it's a very relevant question. That's a very relevant question. Everyone desires happiness, everybody desires fulfillment. And the way I was taught, the person is homosexual when they're born. Now they got the sexual confusion war wow. running around. Wow. Yeah. We got third grade black boys talking about I'm happy to be gay. Wow. Fourth grade black girls, I'm a lesbian, can't even spell it. Because somebody made you feel guilty about not supporting the gay struggle. There are so many other uh, variables around human sexuality that I, I just can't answer. Homosexuality, the gay um, lifestyle. I believe that no one wakes up one day and says, I want to be gay. No one wakes up and says, I want to be a dope addict. No one wakes up and says, I want to go to jail for the rest of my life. I just think that some folks are born that way. I'm not sure whether they're born that way. The vast majority of people that live an alternative lifestyle. The question has always been, uh, is, an, is an individual born that way? I answer that. All right. What the Bible says is some sort of abomin abomination. It's abomination. And it is. it is. So, um. Then it is what, then it is what, then it is what. There are many have been abused and have been molested or some psychological event may have happened. A lot of times you have young females who see their mothers abused and because they see the abuse and they see their mothers not unwilling or unable to fight back, they vow that they'll never ever let a man run over them. There are, so many, there are some people who are rejected and they don't feel pretty or attractive enough in their own uh, to the opposite sex and so then when someone then sees that vulnerability and and pulls them into you know relationships something that will make somebody feel comfortable a lot of times i think people um become uh homosexual in their in their in their um, orientation because things have happened and black women you know lesbian black women got one of the highest herpes rates in the country. Homosexuality is now, has been, and will always be a sin in the sight of God. 
there are some that you hear about, you know, that feel like they've always been trapped in the body of the opposite sex. And I, I just don't feel like I'm the one to pass judgment to say whether or not they were born that way or not. I mean, when a three-year-old, I saw something recently, a three or four-year-old little boy was running around with, playing with dolls and, and dressing up in girls' clothes. I, I mean, I don't know where that comes from. So there's not too much they could do about it. It's not like you go and reach 15 or 16-year-olds. Oh, I think I'll be almost The question has always been, uh, is, an, is an individual born? Little boys always see their mothers dressed up, so you can't just say because little boy has a mother and now he wants to dress up like his mommy. Things happen. And so I don't really feel, you know, qualified. You are when you're born to uh, Michael Peterson, who was a, a psychiatrist. He, he taught us that the way he put it, there's, four, there's six stages of becoming a homosexual and the fourth one is birth. There's not too much you can do about it. Uh, well, yeah, uh, in, the, in the sense that all are born in sin and shaping in iniquity. All of us are bent toward something. Our ministry here, you know, is that I have a, an anointing. May not always work in my own family, but I've been able to minister to others and uh, really see some positive results where people may have come into the ministry with that orientation, but totally the power of God turn their lives around and they're just somebody they never thought they could be and, and happy. What the church has done is highlight certain areas that are quote unquote big sin, small sin, they're all of the sin. All, all of us uh, can be uh, very, very raunchy people. I've heard all kinds of stories about First, first, first of all, let, let me say, I'm not sure whether they're born that way. When we read what God says, I'm, I'm never about what people think. If I'm going to be about anything that has to do with our lives, with society, and naturally being a preacher of the gospel. I go according to what God says. I would suspect from uh, uh, what the Bible says about it, that it is wrong. The Bible acknowledged that there's going to be people who are going to have that kind of inclination, and it's wrong. I'm very clear that the Bible in Genesis chapter 1 has male and female. And it seems to me that the authentic relationship is between a man and a woman. Just like uh, an, an inclination for adultery, uh, it's wrong. It's, or an inclination for it to steal, it's wrong. You know, there's some things, some behavioral patterns that are just wrong. God says, Old Testament, it's an abomination. It's brought on over in the New Testament, it's an abomination. Well, when I was a young kid, I could remember taking something that didn't belong to me. Now, uh, was I born a thief? <laughs> I pushed it. <laughs> Nobody wants to be pointed out as an adulterer. Nobody wants to be pointed out as a blessing. There are so many other uh, variables around human sexuality that I, I just can't answer. The key to it is that we're either going to stand for what God says, or we're going to leave it alone. Not in its, its sinful nature and what have you, I just have to go back to Genesis chapter 1 and uh, chapter 2, where to me an authentic relationship from a biblical perspective, is a man and a woman. This ain't about sex. This ain't about lust. This ain't about culture. It's about African racial extermination. It's about reducing your damn numbers, idiot. If everybody in 
this audience today decides to only date people with the same reproductive organ for the rest of your life, where does the next generation of African children come from? You don't get none. Folks that claim to be homosexual, I believe, have just as much right. See, judgment day is coming. I mean, let's, let's face facts. Judgment Day is coming. I just simply believe that um, people should have the right uh, as it relates to their own personal choices. He can change God's mind. He makes this is it, and this is it, and this is the way it's going to be. Our thinking can be whether clear or distorted. It doesn't really matter. I don't have to accept it. I respect that you have a right to choose. No matter what anybody says, that's it. That's ball game. Take it to the bank. Lock it up in a safe deposit box. The final judge, the final person to have the final say is God himself. You have AIDS, you have drugs, you have prison, you have miseducation, economic castration, black on black homicide, and guess what? Homosexuality is worse than all them put together. He said, well, wait a minute, brother Uma, I don't agree with that. How the hell can homosexuality be worse than what's going on in Chicago? Seven bodies a day. I said, it's real simple. In order for black on black crime to operate, people must have been born. There must be bodies. In order for you to miseducate, there must be bodies. In order for you to incarcerate, there must be bodies. But homosexuality, prevents the semen from joining with the egg. You stop procreation altogether. It is worse than the rest of them put together. Folks should be treated decent. The book says that all can be delivered. All can be set free. I believe that if you were born gay, you don't have to stay that way. That's just how I believe, and that's what I teach. At the same time, the Bible declares, through love and kindness have I drawn thee. So I can't not love you because I believe you're homosexual or a lesbian. God allowed it to happen. What he does, I honor. Black men, homosexual, one of the highest HIV rates in the country. The anus is a direct route to the bloodstream. That's why when you take the baby to the doctor, the doctors tend to give some of them the immunizations in the rectum because it goes straight to the bloodstream. So if you got a man sodomizing another man, that energy goes straight to the bloodstream. You talk about death. On contact! On contact. And that's why we against homosexuality.